Databases are used in library research, so what is a database? Data refers to information. Base refers to a container. The container is a place to collect and store information. In the container, this information is organized and labeled, making it easy to search for and retrieve. When you know what a database is and how to use it, you can make this powerful tool work for you in your everyday and academic life. You use databases all the time. For example, your cell phone contacts are in a database, where you collect, store, label, and organize database information yourself. Let's see how it works. We'll start by using Farah's information as an example. Here's Farah's contact page, which is based on information that you entered into your cell phone. Behind the scenes in your phone, there's a contacts database. Databases store information in tables. Here's the table for your cell phone contacts. When you added Farah's contact information, you populated the database with her name, cell and work phone numbers, and address. You did the same for all your other contacts, Mary, Michelle, Jan, and Zach. In the database table, columns divide information into different categories. These are called fields. Each row of the table contains an entry with this group of related information. These are called records. Even though you don't see this table, it's at work behind the scenes in your phone. And it allows you to retrieve information quickly and easily. Your cell phone has a database that you have created yourself. You also use databases that others have created. For example, databases are behind an online shopping catalog like this one. Joe's online tent store. Imagine you're going camping with a friend and you need a tent. You're keen on buying a red one. So you use red two-person tent as your keyword search on Joe's website. Joe has created a database that contains all his tent store inventory. It's organized and labeled using fields and records. When you search for red two-person tent, your keywords are matched to records in Joe's inventory. The database sends the results to your screen. You get two results for a two-person red tent, but your budget is only $500. Very often, databases have limiters that allow you to narrow your search. Joe's tent store has a price limiter. You use it to select the tent you can afford. Joe's online tent store database finds one tent that matches your criteria. When you use a library search box, you're searching a database too. Rather than shopping for a tent, you are searching for sources of information. Here's an example. You're searching for scholarly articles for a paper about the effect of climate change on wildlife in the Canadian Rockies. You enter your keywords in the search box, climate change, and wildlife and Canadian Rockies. You get seven results, four articles, two books, one book chapter. But you want only articles and they must be peer reviewed. So you use limiters to narrow your search. You limit your results to articles that are peer reviewed. The library's database finds three results that match your criteria. How does this happen? Just like in your phone contacts and Joe's online tent store, the library has a database in the background where sources are organized and labeled into fields like title, author, year, item type, peer reviewed or not, and into records, one for each item in the library. When you conduct your search using keywords and then limiters, the database matches them to the records that meet your criteria. Bonus tip. When you use keywords to conduct a search in a database, don't be surprised if not all the keywords appear in the result titles. You might not find some keywords until you click on the title and dig deeper into the result. Databases are digital containers where information is collected, stored, organized, and labeled. They are powerful tools that allow you to conduct fast, focused searches in your everyday and academic life.